Hi, and welcome to another episode of the VIP Sound Lab. I'm your host, Joe Fontaine. And in this video, we're going to take a look at using the time signature in machine. What is the time signature? The time signature, also known as meter signature, bar signature, or measure signature, is a notational convention used in Western musical notation to specify how many beats are in each bar and which note value constitutes one beat. As you can see here in machine, the time signature appears as stack numerals. In common time, machine defaults to a four, four time respectively. As you can see below, there are various types of time signatures depending on whether the music follows simple rhythms or if you want to get a more involved, unusual shifting tempos by adjusting the time signature here. As you can see below, we can manipulate our time signature to get more complex time signatures. And I'll just do a couple of examples here. Depending on what type of producer you are, you can find a time signature that's going to work best for your musical composition. Most producers stay at the 4-4 time signature, which is most likely the most common time signature. Okay. On machine, you also have what's called your swing. And you have your swing on three different levels. You have a master level. Here's your groove filter here. Here's your swing. You can adjust your swing here. You have a group swing here with different cycles. I believe it defaults to one eighth. You can go to three sixteenths as well as one fourth. Six sixteenths, one half, nine sixteenths, and one one. Two one, I believe is the last one. And you also have an invert icon here where you can invert the cycles. Here's your swing. So with this icon, we can adjust the swing, or rather the groove, over the whole entire group completely separate as the one on the master. We also can do it on a sound level. You can do an individual groove or swing on each individual sound. For example, here's the first sound. I can adjust the swing here, adjust the cycle. And on the next sound, I can have a completely different groove or a completely different swing. I would suggest if you put a swing or groove on one sound, more than likely you'd want to put them over the whole entire set of sounds. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at one other feature in machine. I wanted to mention before we end the video. And in this part of the video, we're going to take a look at using our custom effects chains and saving our presets. We all know machine. You can mix on a master level as well as a group level, as well as a sound level to get effects from these tabs here on individual sounds in our musical composition, as you can see here, or over a group level where we can affect the whole entire group of sounds. This particular composition here, I'm going to use for an example. Let's say for example, on the first tab, I had an EQ. On the second tab, I had I don't know. Let's go with a transient master. On the third tab, let's kind of go with a compressor. And on the last tab, we're going to go with a limiter. I'll adjust the threshold. On the compressor, let's go ahead and adjust the attack as well as the release for a little more punch in the drums. The rest of these settings look pretty good. Transient master. Again, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here just to give an example. Of course, you would take your time and actually go through your presets and get them set up to your particular taste, to your particular sound. Okay. Now this effects chain can be, again, as I said, routed, you know, for example, you can grab a blank group here 
and take these sounds and you can change them into what's called inputs. Okay. By setting up your inputs, you can route sounds internally inside of the machine. But that's another video. You guys can cut to my YouTube channel, subscribe, and you can see how we get that set up. For right now, I'm just going to stick with saving the presets. Uh, I had a couple of VIP members asking me how to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, address these questions in this particular part of the video. All right. So now we have our custom effects set up here as a chain, and we want to recall this particular chain for later use. So you would select this icon here. You notice you have a save as icon here. I have mine saving right now, defaulting to my desktop. You can save your groups wherever you like inside your hard drive. That's going to be completely up to you. Okay. When this menu comes up, I would suggest naming it something, um, you know, so you don't overwrite your files. You know, you want to give it something specific. Um, I'll give this one VIP effects chain, um, you know, just to be simple and quick. You can see it's going to get saved as a group. MGRP, which just basically means machine group. Okay. That gets saved to the desktop. Okay. Now that whole entire group, the MIDI notes, everything, this effects chain, it's all saved. For example, if I was to go here, hit reset to erase this whole entire session. As you can see, there's nothing on the session. Unless I opened up machine for the first time, I go over here to group. So like open, here's our effects chain. The benefit to it is it also has our project. Our whole entire musical composition, as you can see here, is also inside that composition. I'm not saying you have to do it that way because you don't. You can easily, um, what is it? You hold shift and I think clear on the hardware controller. And you can clear the whole entire, uh, you know, MIDI notes here. But I'm also going to show you another way you can actually mix and match um, certain presets that you might have inside your group. For example, okay, let's say for later use. You might say, I might like the way I EQ'd um, some certain drums. You might want to be on the sound level here, uh, get some effects on individual sounds, you know, from certain presets. So, for example, we can save these, uh, these particular tabs of presets individually. For example, as you can see right here, we have an open menu here. If we want to open presets, and we have a save as menu here if we want to save our presets. OK, now, again, you got to be careful when you're saving these sounds because you want to make sure that it's saving in a location where you can find them. You don't want to have it, you know, sh you know, sprawling all over your your hard drive. Again, here I'm using the desktop. So let's just select VIP EQ. And as you can see right here, the machine preset comes up. It's called the MFXP, which simply means machine effects project. And now on the transient master, again, as you can see right here, I have one that's already inside of my computer. Now, this is what I meant by when you don't want to have your, uh, you know, when you want to recall your presets for later use, you want to put them somewhere where you always can find the machine naturally defaults them inside of the machine modules, effects, and then your presets show up here. I'm going to do mine just a little bit different. I'm going to put mine here on the desktop for right now. Again, you can save yours over there. You know, if you want to have it more neat and organized, I'm just doing this for the video. Here's the first one that we did. Compressor. Let's see here. VIP compressor. And again, this is on a different computer. So the presets in here is like, it's like non-existent on this computer. I do tutorials on, okay, let's see here. VIP compressor. And the last one was what limiter. Okay. Limiter. Again, go back to this. Oh, I went there already. VIP limiter. And being that it's a, uh, MFXP file and this little icon, I can't, you know, go out of that category. Like I can't look for groups when you're on this particular uh, setting here. 
Like I can't, I can't go in here on a tab and select open. I can't open a group from here. See how it's just MFXP files. It looks like the group is not on the desktop, but it actually is because if I go over here and if I'm looking for groups, okay, notice how the groups show up, but the, uh, effects projects don't show up. That's the way machine works. It, it looks for that individual location. Let's take all this off. Let's say if we were in machine for the first time and I was like, okay, I wanted to get, you know, a certain effect over the group. I can go to this tab. I can select open, look for that particular effects preset that I set up. For example, transient master it shows up again. That's going to affect the whole group. If you want it on a sound level, you're going to jump over here to sound. I'm looking for transient master. Now this particular setting is only affecting this one particular kick here. That one sound is what's going to get affected. Okay. So let's see, let's go back to the group level. For example, let me reset this. Okay. So let's say if we were, we were in machine completely brand new, we were just getting started. Let's say right here, we just added a kick sound. I can go to the first tab and go to the little open icon there, or I can go over to the second tab. And I wanted to, let's say, grab the compressor, for example, there's our particular setting. And everything is set up exactly the way we had it. All right. And we'll just hold the video up right here. Again, my name is Joel Fontaine of the VIP sound lab. Be sure to come by the website. We have a VIP membership. It's nine 99 with no monthly fees. Again, I repeat no monthly fees. We have free tutorial videos on machine as well as other DAWs. We do free monthly giveaways. We do free drum kits, free controller editor templates, you know, slice and chop presets for Ableton structure kits for pro tools, things of that nature, anything musically related uh, to help producers out with composition. Uh, we have a lot of freeware plugins, controller editor templates for machine. Uh, you, I mean, you name it, we have a lot going on over there. So I like to see you guys come on over there. We also have a new machine guru forums on Facebook. You guys can come over there and join the conversation and I will see you guys on the next one. You guys have a great day.